Have you ever witnessed a wedding objection? What was it like? My dad's been a pastor for as long as I can remember. He's the kind of guy who's seen it all. Funerals, baptisms, Sunday sermons, the whole shebang. But where he really shines is weddings. Over the years, he's officiated everything from fancy white linen events in upscale hotels to simple backyard ceremonies under makeshift arbors. He's always had a knack for making each one special, even if it's just a quick vow exchange at the courthouse. But there's one wedding, one that still gets him shaking his head and chuckling whenever he thinks about it. And believe me, he's told this story so many times that it's practically a family legend now. It's the kind of tale that gets better with age, like a fine whiskey. You'd think that after all these years, the details might get a little fuzzy, but nope. Every time he recounts it, it's as vivid as if it happened yesterday. So, this couple comes to him one day, looking to tie the knot. Now, most folks who come to my dad for a wedding want something straightforward. They might have a theme or a special request, but it's usually pretty tame. Maybe some candle lighting or a sand ceremony. But this couple, well, they had something else in mind entirely. They wanted their wedding to be unique, something that screamed redneck, but with a twist. When I say redneck, I don't mean just a casual country vibe with a few cowboy hats and some line dancing. No. These two wanted to go all out. They wanted their wedding to be a full-on, over-the-top, ridiculous spectacle that nobody would ever forget. And they didn't just want a barn or a field. They wanted something that blended classic Western flair with the kind of backwoods charm that would make even the most seasoned hunters blush. The first thing they did was find the perfect spot for their ceremony, an old, run-down ranch that had seen better days. It was the kind of place where you could practically hear the ghosts of cattle rustlers and gold prospectors whispering in the wind. The main building was this rickety old barn that looked like it might collapse if you sneezed too hard, and the surrounding fields were dotted with patches of scrubby grass and the occasional cow patty. But to this couple, it was paradise. They loved everything about it. The rustic, weathered wood, the sagging roof, the smell of hay and manure that hung in the air like a permanent fog. Now my dad is a pretty flexible guy. He's rolled with all sorts of weird requests over the years, from Unity peanut butter sandwiches to a wedding where the bride rode in on a literal tractor. But this couple, they took it to a whole new level. The first sign that things were going to get wild was when they handed him his outfit for the ceremony. You see, they didn't want your typical pastor in a suit or robe. No, they wanted my dad to look like he just walked off the set of a spaghetti western. So they rented him a cowboy suit. But not just any cowboy suit. This thing was straight out of a dime store novel. The kind of outfit that made you think of shootouts at high noon and outlaws on horseback. The suit was a deep, shiny black with silver embroidery that curled and looped across the chest and down the sleeves in elaborate patterns. The shirt underneath was bright red, the kind of red that practically screamed, look at me. There were fringe tassels hanging from the sleeves, the kind that swished and swung with every movement. The pants, matching the jacket, had silver piping running down the sides, giving the whole ensemble a flashy, almost cartoonish look. But the pièce de résistance, the thing that really made the outfit pop was the hat. This wasn't just any cowboy hat. It was a giant white Stetson that could have easily doubled as a small tent. My dad swears that if he'd leaned too far to one side, the thing would have toppled him over. It was so big, it looked like it had its own zip code. He's a tall guy, but with that hat on, he must have stood at least seven feet high. He looked like a cross between Doug Dimmodome and a rodeo clown. And just when he thought he'd seen it all, they handed him a revolver. A real, honest-to-God revolver. Now, my dad's no stranger to guns. He grew up in the South, after all, where guns are as common as church bell. But this? This was a new one for him. He wasn't exactly thrilled at the idea of packing heat while he was trying to marry two people. But they assured him it was just for show. The gun was loaded with blanks, they said. And they wanted him to fire it at a specific moment during the ceremony. Now, at this point, my dad's thinking this whole thing is teetering on the edge of absurdity. But he's a good sport. And he figured, why not? If this was what the couple wanted, who was he to say no? So he put on the suit, strapped the gun to his hip, and tried to keep a straight face as he looked in the mirror. The ceremony itself was set up in the middle of the field, right in front of that rickety old barn. The guests sat on bales of hay arranged in neat rows, with more than a few wearing cowboy hats and boots, as if they'd all just come from a rodeo. There was even a horse tied up near the barn, lazily swishing its tail and chomping on some grass, adding to the whole Wild West vibe. As the guests settled in, my dad took his place at the front, the giant Stetson casting a wide shadow over his face. He could feel the weight of the revolver on his hip, a constant reminder that this was no ordinary wedding. The bride and groom were both dressed to the nines in western gear. The bride in a white dress with cowboy boots peeking out from underneath, and the groom in a matching black suit with a red shirt, just like my dad's. The ceremony began like any other, 
with my dad welcoming everyone and saying a few words about love and commitment. But then, right as they were about to exchange vows, the groom gave my dad a nod, the signal they'd agreed on beforehand. My dad, trying to suppress the laughter bubbling up inside him, reached for the revolver. He pulled it out, aimed it at the sky, and fired. The sound of the gunshot echoed across the field, startling the guests and causing the horse near the barn to rear up slightly. For a split second, there was silence as everyone registered what had just happened. Then the groom, with a huge grin on his face, turned to the bride and said, Darling, I reckon we're ready to ride off into the sunset. And that was it. Vows exchanged, rings slipped onto fingers, and with a final tip of his giant hat, my dad declared them husband and wife. The couple didn't just walk down the aisle. They sauntered, hand in hand, looking every bit like a pair of outlaws heading off on a new adventure. The guests whooped and hollered, and as the newlyweds climbed onto the horse, yep, they had a horse ready for their getaway. My dad stood there, the gun still in his hand, and watched as they rode off into the distance. It was like something out of a movie, completely ridiculous and absolutely unforgettable. After the wedding, my dad hung up the cowboy suit, placed the giant Stetson on a shelf, and stored the revolver away as a memento of that wild day. He's officiated plenty of weddings since then, but none quite like that one. It's a story he'll never get tired of telling, and honestly, I never get tired of hearing it. It's the kind of thing that reminds you just how strange and wonderful life can be, especially when you least expect it. So here's where things really take a turn for the insane. After getting used to the idea of dressing like a dime store cowboy and firing a gun in the middle of a wedding, my dad thought that was the end of the weird requests. But as it turned out, he was just getting started. A few days before the wedding, the groom calls up my dad with another little idea. Apparently, the couple had been brainstorming, and they wanted to take things up a notch. This wasn't just going to be your average, run-of-the-mill redneck wedding with a bit of Wild West flair. Oh no, they wanted to put on a show, something that would get the guests talking for years to come. The groom explains that during the speak now or forever hold your peace part of the ceremony, his brother was going to stand up and object. Now my dad's dealt with this part of the wedding a hundred times before. Usually, it's just a formality, a chance for the guests to hold their breath and wonder if some jilted lover is going to come crashing in to stop the wedding. But in this case, the objection was planned. The groom's brother was going to make a big scene, objecting to the marriage in the most dramatic way possible. At first, my dad thought, all right, a bit of theatrics. Sure, why not? But then the groom dropped the bombshell. Instead of just brushing off the fake objection and moving on, they wanted my dad to whip out the revolver, aim it at the brother, and pretend to shoot him. And not just a quick shot, mind you. They wanted the brother to ham it up, really sell it, like he was a gunslinger in a saloon brawl. He'd clutch his chest, stagger back, and then collapse into his seat, dead, leaving the wedding to proceed as if nothing had happened. My dad's no stranger to weird requests, but this one left him absolutely floored. I mean, come on. Pretending to shoot a wedding guest in the middle of the ceremony? It sounded more like a scene out of a Quentin Tarantino movie than something that belonged in a wedding. He could hardly believe what he was hearing. For a second, he thought maybe they were pulling his leg, trying to see how far they could push the joke. But as the groom kept talking, it became clear they were dead serious. Pun totally intended. Now, my dad's the kind of guy who's seen it all, and he's not easily rattled. But this? This had him questioning whether he'd accidentally wandered into some alternate universe where weddings were more like staged shootouts than solemn vows. He mulled it over for a bit, probably wondering how he'd managed to find himself in this situation. There's a line between being flexible and rolling with the punches, and then there's this, a full-blown fake assassination in the middle of a wedding. But after a lot of back and forth with himself, my dad agreed to go along with it. Maybe it was curiosity, maybe it was the sheer absurdity of the whole thing, or maybe he just figured, what the hell? This will make one hell of a story to tell later. He wasn't sure how it was all going to play out, but he decided to roll with it. Sometimes, you just have to go with the flow, even if that flow is taking you straight into a mock gunfight at a wedding. So, the big day finally arrives. The sun was shining, the guests were gathered on their hay bales, and the whole setup looked like something straight out of a Wild West show. My dad was decked out in his cowboy suit, complete with that enormous white Stetson, and the revolver strapped to his hip. If you didn't know better, you'd think he was about to draw down in the middle of a dusty street, not officiate a wedding. The ceremony starts, and everything's going off without a hit. The couple is beaming, the guests are smiling, and my dad's keeping it together, even with the knowledge that he's about to fake shoot someone in front of all these people. He gets through the opening, says some nice words about love and marriage, and then the moment arrives. If anyone here has a reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. For a split second, there's nothing but silence. Then, right on cue, 
the groom's brother stands up. He's got this wild look in his eye, like he's about to deliver the performance of a lifetime. He starts shouting about how the groom isn't fit to be married, how he's got a secret life, or some nonsense like that. It's all part of the act, of course, but he's laying it on thick, waving his arms around and making a big scene. My dad, cool as a cucumber, reaches down and whips out the revolver. He does it with this smooth, practiced motion that would have made Clint Eastwood proud. The guests, who had no idea what was coming, gasp. A few of them actually jumped in their seats, and one lady in the front row let out a little yelp. He points the gun straight at the brother, and with all the flair he can muster, pulls the trigger. The blank fires with a loud bang echoing across the field. The brother, to his credit, plays his part perfectly. He clutches his chest like he's just been shot, stumbles back a few steps, and then does this dramatic fall back into his chair. He even lets out a little groan for effect before going limp, head lolling to the side like he's just been taken out by a sharpshooter. For a moment, there's dead silence. The guests are in shock, mouths hanging open, eyes wide as saucers. My dad standing there, revolver still smoking, with this look on his face like, well, that just happened. Then, slowly, the realization starts to sink in. A few of the guests start to chuckle, and before long, the entire place is roaring with laughter. It's clear this was all just part of the show, and they can't believe what they've just witnessed. The groom, trying to keep a straight face, turns to my dad and says, well, I guess that's one less objection to worry about. My dad, not missing a beat, tips his hat and replies, I reckon it is. And with that, the ceremony continues as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. The rest of the wedding goes off without a hitch. They exchange vows, say, I do. And before you know it, they're pronounced husband and wife. The guests are still buzzing from the whole shootout scene. And as the newlyweds make their way down the aisle, there's a sense that everyone's just witnessed something truly special. Something they'll be talking about for years. After the ceremony, the brother, who had played dead for the remainder of the ceremony, finally comes back to life, grinning from ear to ear. He gets a standing ovation from the guests, who are all thoroughly impressed by his commitment to the bit. My dad shakes his head, still trying to process the insanity of it all. But deep down, he knows he's got one hell of a story to tell from now on. As the reception kicks off with more than a few toasts to the happy couple and the wildest wedding anyone's ever seen, my dad quietly slips away, hanging up his cowboy hat and holstering the revolver for the last time. He's had his share of memorable weddings, but this one, this one, takes the cake. And every time he tells the story, he can't help but laugh at the sheer absurdity of it all. A reminder that no matter how many weddings you've officiated, there's always something new and unexpected around the corner. For that split second after my dad pulled the trigger, the whole world seemed to stand still. The guests, sitting there on their hay bales, were caught in a moment of pure, unfiltered shock. It was as if everyone collectively held their breath, trying to process what they'd just witnessed. You could see the gears turning in their heads, eyes wide, mouths slightly open, not quite sure if they should laugh or scream. And then it hit them. Almost all at once, the realization set in. This was part of the show. The groom's brother wasn't really shot. He was just hamming it up for laughs. The stunned silence quickly gave way to a roar of applause, laughter, and hoots that echoed across the field. My dad says it was like watching a scene out of a slapstick comedy. Pure chaos, but the good kind. The kind that leaves everyone grinning from ear to ear. People were practically falling out of their seats, laughing so hard they had tears streaming down their faces. There were a few guests who seemed to be holding their sides, like they couldn't decide whether they needed to catch their breath or laugh some. The groom's brother, still slumped in his chair, was soaking up the applause like he'd just given the performance of a lifetime. It was clear that the guests were loving every second of it. And my dad, well, he just stood there with the revolver still in his hand, trying his best to stay in character, even though he was probably on the verge of cracking up himself. He'd been to a lot of weddings, seen a lot of things, but nothing like this. This was something else entirely. A mix of theater, comedy, and just plain old-fashioned fun, wrapped up in the most ridiculous wedding he'd ever been a part of. Once the laughter finally died down, my dad holstered the revolver and carried on with the ceremony, trying his best to keep a straight face. The couple said their vows, exchanged their rings, and with a final dramatic flourish, my dad pronounced them husband and wife. The dead brother miraculously came back to life just in time to join the celebration, much to the delight of the guests who were still buzzing from the earlier spectacle. As the newlyweds kissed and the crowd cheered, my dad took a moment to glance around at the scene. The old barn, the rows of hay bales, the guests still laughing and clapping. It was all so surreal. Here he was, dressed up like a cowboy in some old western, presiding over a wedding that felt more like a circus act than a solemn occasion. And yet, there was something undeniably magical about it. 
something that made him realize just how special this day was for the couple and everyone involved. The rest of the day went off without a hit. The reception was held right there in the field, with barbecue, beer, and a live band that played country tunes well into the night. The guests were in high spirits, trading stories about the shooting and laughing at how they'd been fooled. My dad, still in his ridiculous cowboy getup, stuck around for a while, mingling with the guests and sharing a few laughs of his own. But as the sun began to set and the stars started to peek out, he quietly made his exit. He slipped out of the cowboy suit, packed away the oversized Stetson, and stashed the revolver back in its case. As he changed into his regular clothes, he couldn't help but chuckle at the absurdity of it all. This wedding would go down in history as the craziest, most outlandish ceremony he'd ever officiated, and he knew it was a story he'd be telling for years to come. When he got home that night, tired but still buzzing from the day's events, he sat down and tried to process everything that had happened. My dad's a man of deep faith, someone who takes his role as a pastor seriously. But even he couldn't help but feel a sense of pride at how well the whole thing had gone off, despite all the madness. It was one of those rare moments where everything just clicked, where the absurdity of the situation only added to the joy of the day. To this day, he swears it was the craziest wedding he's ever officiated. He's had some pretty memorable moments in his career. There was the time a dog ran down the aisle carrying the rings, or the time a bride's veil caught fire from a rogue candle. But nothing quite compares to being asked to fake shoot someone in the middle of a ceremony. It's one of those stories that no matter how many times he tells it, never gets old. And honestly, I can't blame him. How many people can say they've done something like that? The story of the redneck but not redneck wedding has become a kind of legend in our family. Whenever we get together, someone inevitably asks my dad to tell it again. And each time, he does so with the same enthusiasm as the first. You can see the glint in his eye, the way he leans in a little closer as he gets to the part where he pulls the trigger, reliving the moment with the same sense of disbelief and amusement he felt back then. And you know what? I think he kind of loves it, even if he would never admit it outright. Sure, it's not the kind of wedding he'd want to do every weekend, but there's something about that day that stuck with him, something that reminds him of why he does what he does. Weddings are supposed to be a celebration of love, a joyous occasion that brings people together. And that's exactly what this one did, even if it did so in the most unconventional way possible.